welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Tamisha and here on my channel, I love to share recipes and everything food related. So tonight, I'm super excited because I'm gonna be sharing it with you guys, my family's favorite meatloaf recipe. It is highly requested among all three of my kids for birthdays, special occasions, or when they come home to visit, they always ask for this meatloaf. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make a super delicious and flavorful meatloaf that is not dry <laughs> so let's jump right into the ingredients okay so in my bowl i have two pounds of 85 15 ground beef and one pound of ground pork so when i make my meatloaf i like to make a big meatloaf because leftovers <laughs> and no matter how much meatloaf i make it's never enough my kids always say make more next time so usually about three pounds of ground meat is enough to feed my family so when we talk about the ground beef, in order to have a super juicy meatloaf, you want to make sure that the ground meat that you use has a good amount of fat in it. Not too much fat, but just enough to keep it nice and juicy. So I'm using 85-15 today. I would say an 85-15 or maybe a 90-10 for your ground beef would be great. What I also like to do is I like to add in a pound of ground pork as well. That's completely optional. You can use all ground beef if you want to, but um, generally when I make this, I always buy a pound of ground pork as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the rest of our ingredients. So right here, I'm using um, some panko breadcrumbs. You can use regular breadcrumbs, or you can also, um, if you don't have the pre-made breadcrumbs, you can just put some toast in the oven. Um, I like to generally do about one, one and a half slices of toast per pound. Also, I have three eggs right here that I'm going to beat and add into here. Generally, my rule of thumb is one pound, it's not one pound, one egg per pound of um, meatloaf. We also have a um, diced onion. I have some fresh parsley. I'm also gonna be using some onion powder, garlic powder, some pink Himalayan salt, a little bit of black pepper, some Worcestershire sauce, and then just a little bit of milk as well. So let's go ahead and start getting everything into our bowl. I'm gonna add in our breadcrumbs. And you just wanna beat your eggs just a little bit. Honestly, you don't really have to even beat them if you don't want to, because you're gonna give this a good mix anyway. So we're gonna add in our egg. All right, so then I also have some onions. And this is about one large onion. You can you know, use as much or as little as you want to. And the same goes with the fresh parsley. You don't even have to use fresh parsley if you don't want. You can also use just a dried parsley. Just season it whichever way your taste buds desire. Okay, so I'm gonna add in some onion powder. And don't worry guys, I will put the recipe down below in the description box for you to follow. Just keep in mind, if you wanna make a smaller meatloaf, you just kinda of cut this in half. Also going to add in our onion powder. Oh, no, this is the garlic, this was the onion. <laughs> just in case I said that wrong. And give it a little bit of black pepper. Also, I wanted to mention off camera, I think I showed one cup of the panko breadcrumbs. Um, I actually am gonna add two cups for the three pounds of ground beef. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt and also our Worcestershire, Worcestershire you know what, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> our Worcestershire sauce. Just a little bit of that as well. Worcestershire sauce is great for any type of meatloaf, um, beef recipes, um, Salisbury steak, stuff like that. And then I'm also going to add in, we're going to start off with one cup of milk. If I feel like I need to add more, I will. So what I'm going to do now is mix this up with our hands. Now, I don't necessarily like the feeling of ground beef underneath my nails, so I am going to put some gloves on real quick. All right, so I have some gloves on. So what we're gonna do is go into our bowl and just starting getting, starting to get everything come well combined. 
I'm not going to keep the camera on this long because I know that it kind of grosses some people out. I wanted to mention while I'm giving this a mix, we can take it off of the ground beef. <laughs> um, the reason why you want to add the eggs and the breadcrumbs is because you need a binding agent to actually hold your meatloaf together as you're cooking it. Otherwise, during the cooking process or when you go to cut it, it's just going to um, just completely fall apart. So you need something to actually hold the loaf um, together. So I'm going to continue mixing this and then we're going to shape our loaf when we come back on camera. Okay, so I want to show you guys something really quick. Our meatloaf mixture is all combined, but I want to show you a trick that I learned from the Divas Can Cook channel. And what you want to do, obviously you can't taste your meatloaf mixture to make sure that it is seasoned well enough. But what you want to do is just pinch off a little piece like this, nothing bigger than that. And you want to just fry this off. So let me show you how to do that really quick. All right, so I already have one in here. You just want to put this in your pan and just fry a small piece so that you can taste it. And then if you need to adjust your seasonings, you can do so. Okay, so now it's time to start forming our loaf. Now you can use a loaf pan, but honestly, I actually just like to put my meatloaf in a casserole dish and sh shape it into a loaf. So I have a um, casserole dish right here that has been sprayed with some cooking spray. And all you're going to do is just form your loaf into your pan. So our meatloaf is shaped in our casserole dish. Now your meatloaf does not have to be perfectly shaped. Just, just get it in there. <laughs> get it in there however you want to shape it. But what I will say is that you definitely want to make sure that your meatloaf is even no matter which way you shape it because you want all of your meatloaf to cook all the way through. So if you do it even, they all cook, um, the entire meatloaf cooks evenly at the same time. So what we're going to move on to next we got to make our glaze to go on top of our meatloaf. I like to double glaze my meatloaf, meaning I like to put just a little bit of glaze on the top um, when I first start baking it and just let that kind of cook in. And then I put my thicker coat of glaze on close to the end of the cooking process so we can have that nice thick layer of ketchup glaze on top. So we're going to move right on along to that. So. This glaze is pretty simple. <laughs> um, I make my glaze kind of the same way that my mom does. We just kind of put just a um, bunch of things together <laughs> to go on top, which is gonna be our ketchup. I'm also using some barbecue sauce because my mom uses barbecue sauce for hers. So I do as well. Use any barbecue sauce that you want. This is the no sugar added sweet baby rays. This is because that's what I have right now. I am also going to add more Worcestershire sauce to it. That was a little bit of the onion powder and I'm also going to add just a little bit of the garlic powder. Some black pepper. And then what I also like to add is some brown sugar. I feel like the brown sugar actually helps your glaze to kind of crust a little bit on top. So we're gonna add in about a heaping tablespoon of the brown sugar. So what you wanna do is just give this a good mix and then we're gonna spread it on top of our meat. So we're gonna add half of this now and then we'll put the other half on once we're almost finished baking our meatloaf. Just give it a good spread all over your meatloaf. And since we're not using a loaf pan, make sure you get the sides too. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. We're going to cook this for a total of about an hour, maybe an hour and 10, 15, just depends, um, give or take. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some foil over to cover up our meatloaf because we don't want it to cook too fast and end up drying out. So we're going to cook it with foil for the first half hour, 45 minutes. And then we're going to take our foil off put the remainder of our glaze on top and then bake it for another half an hour to 45 minutes. All right, guys, so that is it. Our meatloaf is already plated up. It is nice and juicy. I paired it with our favorite sides for meatloaf, which is mashed potatoes and corn. Pair it with your favorite side for a delicious dinner. As always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another recipe. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Also, if you decide to give this recipe a try, you know I love hearing from you, so please comment down below and let me know what you think. I'm about to go enjoy this meatloaf, and until the next recipe, you guys stay safe.